Okay, welcome back. So we left off with this really bad production audio. I heard it this way. Okay, that's just not going to work. And what we just learned with fading and room tone won't help us here because the room tone for this situation is really bad. So what do we do? Well, we begin looking at other tools that you will use as a sound designer to clean up your dialogue. Let me say this about the tools that I'm going to start introducing. We're going to do this in waves. So if I show you some tools and they don't make complete sense, it's okay because we're going to continue using those tools and things will clarify for you. So I don't want you to stress out about that. And also before we jump into tools, I want to show you something really fast. Ignore what I'm doing here. I just need to get a graphical representation up. Okay, here we go. Sound waves are made up of vibrations and it's measured with Hertz. One vibration equals one Hertz. And so this is an EQ and on the bottom you see the different Hertz. So we start out really low, which is bass, and then we move up all the way up to 1000 Hertz, which is one kilohertz. And then we keep going on into the treble, which is way up to like 20 kilohertz, okay? When we're working with dialogue that needs to be repaired, sometimes we're targeting certain areas. Also, dialogue will kind of live primarily in certain sections of this. For example, an average male voice is going to live in about 85 to 150 hertz, around that range. Now that doesn't mean that's the only range it lives in, that's just where it heavily primarily exists. A female is around 165 to 250, kids would be different, and of course every person is different. For example, let's take this down a bit, and I have this EQ placed on Addy. I'm going to draw a range around Addy's line here and repeat it. I fooled him. I fooled him. I fooled him. I fooled him. So we're getting the highest peak, again, sort of in that typical female range. But there's a lot of other stuff going on here. And so it's not only here that a voice exists. So why is this important? Well, because sometimes, for example, we've got a constant background noise like an air conditioner or whatever that's in a certain frequency range that we might be able to carve out without affecting the voice too much. Also, the Fairlight manual has some other details about the ranges in general when it comes to dialogue. Let me read that to you. They say the 100 to 300 hertz range, if it's too low it sounds thin, if it's too high it loses clarity. 200 to 500 hertz, when it's just right, it sounds warm, but if it's too high, it can sound boxy. 250 to 750, potentially muddy if too high. 600 to 1100, potentially nasally if too high. And then 1 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz, they're saying you can adjust this area for intelligibility if you're having problems with that. 3 to 6 kilohertz adds presence. 5 to 8 kilohertz is where a sibilance might happen. Sibilance is harsh S sounds in dialogue. It can be taxing to a listener even though they don't know it. And so that's something we can kind of carve out. And the Fairlight Manual is saying that exists often in the 5 to 8K range. In the 9 to 15 kilohertz, they say adjust sheen, sparkle. And then 10 to 20 kilohertz, you can adjust the airiness of the sound. Some of that sounds a little Greek, but it's just an example of how the full range applies to dialogue, okay? So let's close this and go back to our guys and the horses. All right. I heard it. This way. Okay, the first tool I want to show you is the dialogue processor. So we're going to open up effects, go to Fairlight effects, and this is built into Fairlight, the dialogue processor. Now some clips, like I said before, are applied to an entire track, while others are applied to individual clips. And this is an example of applying to an individual clip because the entire dialogue track doesn't have this problem. So I'm going to drag it here. And when you drag it to the clip, it opens up the settings. If I were to close these settings, you can always click on the clip, go to Inspector, to Effects, and there it is. And you just click this little icon like we did on the meters, and it brings it back up. You could also tweak things in here if you get used to that. So what is this? Well, this is a suite of various audio tools. What you need to know is this is just a Fairlight suite. None of these tools are specific to Fairlight, 
in and of themselves. They are Fairlight's version of them, but D-Rumble, de Compressor, all of these things are standard tools that sound designers use. When you apply effects, sometimes they have presets that might work for you or they may not. So you can always check that. This has female or male, and so what's gonna happen when I choose one of these? Well, for example, it might change the frequencies that are targeted because, right, a male voice is gonna lie heavier in one area more so than a female. Let's just look at D-Rumble. If I choose female, it defaults to 89. If I choose male, it defaults to 75. It goes a little lower. So let's choose male, and then I'm gonna turn all of these off, which brings up another important point about dialogue editing. Never use more effects than you need to. You don't want any extra processing on your dialogue. You wanna fix problems, but fix them and then no more, because then your audio is gonna start sounding weird. So if I were trying all these out on this dialogue, I would just use them one at a time to see what worked and then adjust the settings to dial that in even further. Most of these don't apply to this problem, but I'm just gonna use this example to start getting you familiar with some of these common industry tools, okay? So D-Rumble is designed to remove low-end bass stuff. So if I had dialogue that had some kind of deep humming in the background from equipment or something, I could use this, turn it on, and say, hey, anything below 75 hertz, let's carve that out. This background noise is not at that place. So for example, I'll just show you. This is where your range comes into play. Draw a range and loop it. And when I loop it, I'm gonna turn this on and off and you'll see it doesn't do anything. I heard it. 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 It's not doing anything at all. Now I could take the frequency up, but as we saw on the EQ, if I go too high, I start eating into the guy's vocal. Let's just see what that sounds like. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. See, I start losing the presence of his voice. We don't want to do that. So, not going to work. And by the way, with most of these tools, if you double click on the knobs, it takes them back to the default. Cool. I'm going to disable that. Depop can help with popping sounds from vocals that are too close to a microphone, stuff like that. And beginning with this tool on this interface, we have a little meter here. And what these meters do is show you if the tool is working, meaning if it's removing anything. So that can be handy to tell if you can't hear it, you can tell us that if it's actually removing anything. So you always wanna rely on your ears heavily, but tools help as well. Depop's not the problem. Again, you would target different frequencies here with that. Let's move on. Now this is a de -esser. I said sibilance earlier. That's what a de targets. It helps remove harsh S sounds. Again, not our problem, but you could target a whole range from 700 hertz all the way up to nine kilohertz. And so if we were trying to remove some harsh S sounds, we could try it at different frequencies, adjust the strength of it, and see if we're getting any better with the sound of our dialogue. Okay, a compressor. A compressor is something you're gonna use all the time. And we're gonna go into a compressor in more detail in another lesson, but compressors are amazing. They can make your audio sound so good. And in a nutshell, what they're doing is they're taking audio that might have some really soft points and then loud points. They're sort of filling that out in a way and just adding some really nice presence to it while keeping the fluctuation that the audience needs to hear. But it'll, it'll help bring in some harshness and some peaks. If audio is getting too loud, but you don't want to lower it all, a compressor will say, hey, anything above a certain dB, let's compress that back down so that we're not peaking, but we're not losing the overall presence of this dialogue. Again, we'll cover that in more detail later. Not the problem here. Let's move on. Okay, the expander. Now this is the first one of these tools that could actually help us out. What this does is you can say, hey, any sound that's hitting a certain decibel, I want you to lower it by a certain range, okay? And this will work, be, or could work, because we're going after decibels versus hertz. So this one, for example, would eat into the guy's voice because we're targeting frequency ranges with our removal. This removal is only targeting decibels. Does that make sense? Let me say this in another way. Let's say you had someone in a bedroom and outside the window there was an air conditioner and the air conditioner is just this like nice soft hum and maybe it's hitting at you know, 30, minus 30 decibels. 
Well, the person's voice should be around minus 12 decibels. So if we say, hey, anything that's minus 25 decibels and below, let's lower that. It's gonna lower the air conditioner without eating into the voice, potentially. So let's try this out. I still got my range there, so let's just take this all the way up to 30. And the range we'll just leave at the default right now. Fast and slow means how fast the effect kicks in when this threshold is hit. Let's loop this and see what it sounds like, and I'll turn it on and off so we can hear the difference. I heard it. 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 Not bad. It's doing something. So let me take the range up a little more, which is how much it's lowering anything that is 30 decibels and lower. I heard it. 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 So we've got an annoying pop there, and it's it's fine, it's better, but it's not the best in the world. But the expander is definitely doing something for us. Now another note on this suite of tools. The dialog processor is meant to be a really fast, quick and dirty way to fix some dialog issues. Each of these tools typically have a lot more settings if you're using them individually. And so right now we don't have a lot of control about how the expander is working. If we used an expander effects plugin that was a standalone product, either from Fairlight or third party, that's gonna give us a better result. So let me just turn that off for now. And then the last one is Excite. Excite adds saturation to the three kilohertz and above area. So if you have some dialogue that's muddy or maybe it became a little muddy based on some effects that you had to apply, you can add a little bit of Excite to brighten it up a little bit. And that's one of the ways to do this. So that's some tools just in a, a nutshell. And again, we're gonna go over a lot of these in more detail. So just take what you what made sense here and don't worry about anything that's not making sense, all right? So I'm gonna close this, go to my pointer mode and go to effects and remove that. So the expander did help, but it's not as good as I want it to be. Let me get rid of some windows here. So what else could we do? Well, there's an amazing tool in Resolve Studio. It's not in the free version, but let me show it to you. This alone, honestly is worth the price tag of Studio. But with the clip selected, I'm gonna go back to Inspector and go to Audio now instead of Effects. This is a core tool built into the Audio tab, Voice Isolation. If I turn that on, it defaults to 100, which again, we don't want more processing than we need, but let's just leave it there and see what it did. I heard it. Whoa, let's turn that off. I heard it. So we've got the background noise and that pop. I heard it. That was impressive, right? Very, very good. Now let's back it off to really low, and I'm gonna loop. I heard it. 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 So maybe around 50, because some background noise out in the woods is fine, and so I'm just gonna keep it around 50 for now. So that actually did an amazing job. And I would just do my normal fading here. I heard it. Look at that, right? And then it goes to dead silence, but we're gonna fill this with some forest ambience later on. So when you're outside like this, it's not as big of a deal as it is in a room that's quiet. So I'm not gonna worry about room tone right now. I heard it. That's amazing. So voice isolation can save you. This was not around when I first got into filmmaking, or if it was, it was very pricey tool sets that I didn't have money for. In fact, this is a very recent addition to DaVinci Resolve. It came with some version of Resolve 18. Now, if you have the free version of Resolve and you can't use voice isolation, there is another tool to look at, the noise reduction effect that comes with Fairlight. So I'm gonna drag that onto this. So this has two modes, auto speech mode and manual. Auto speech mode will act like voice isolation, it's just not as good. And then in manual mode, you can tell it what the noise is and then it'll try and remove that from the dialogue. So let's just try manual first. So I'm going to draw a range just around the background noise. And in fact, I'm gonna up the volume of it. That may or may not help, you can experiment with that. And I'm gonna loop it and you'll see while it's playing, I'm going to click learn and then when I click learn the second time, it saves the noise profile, okay? Okay, so it saved it. 
And then now if I reset my volume, okay, clear my in and out, let's see what it did. This way, this way. So let me turn it off. This way, this way, this way, this way. So you know what, not so bad. Let's try auto speech mode. Click it over to that. This way, this way. Actually, you know what, let's reset it. So to reset what we did, go to reset noise profile and then click this. And okay, so now let's do auto speech mode and just see what it can do. This way, this way, this way, this way. Now with auto speech mode, you do have some detection controls here that can help a little bit. I don't know the science behind all of these. I know with attack mode, it has to do with how the profiling happens. So if you set this higher, the noise profile is updated more slowly, which could be better for consistent background noise, at least according to the Fairlight manual. Let's see if it does anything differently. I'm gonna just reset, auto, attack. Not that you had to reset in auto, but I'm just doing that to be safe. This way. Okay, now let's lower it. This way. This way. So it's, it's a little smoother, but it wasn't a big difference. So play around with the detection controls. Overall, this is not gonna do as good of a job as voice isolation. I would probably lean on some other tools that we're gonna learn about in another lesson to help with this. But another thing you can try is the dry wet over here. Dry is less effect and wet is more. And with effects in general, it's good to go to extremes and then ease out of those so you can hear, clearly hear what it's doing. So let me just select this and loop it. And I'm gonna start with none. This way, 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 this way. So you can see that it is removing stuff, it's just not as good as voice isolation. And maybe you can get a little better performance tweaking these, but again, Resolve Studio is worth it, or keep going through the lessons because I've got some other cool tools to show you. But that wraps what I wanted to show you in this lesson. Voice isolation is the best, at least out of the things we looked at today. But in the next lesson, we're gonna look at an expander, a gate, a compressor, and a limiter in more detail than we have so far. It's really cool stuff. Please hit up the community if you have questions. Otherwise, I will see you in that next lesson very soon.